Yo, what's up everybody? This is Junior Chicken here, and I have beaten the Elite Four and Champion. Or you may have already known that if you subscribe to my videos. I've got 135 hours and 19 minutes into Pokemon Platinum, and I've got a lot to talk about. Before facing the Elite Four, I tried to collect the rest of the items that were hidden throughout the areas of Sinnoh that I've been to before. Thanks to Bulbapedia, I was able to find some locations where I could find some items that I had missing. Mainly because I'm a collector and I wanted to make sure I had good items that would help me against the Elite Four. If you want to see my journey through the Elite Four, I've got a playlist that's in the description. During my journey through the Elite Four, I was able to teach new moves to two of my Pokemon. I was able to get Getzloth to learn, <laughs> and I was finally able to teach Blue Beetle Mega Horn which came pretty handy against Garchomp. Once I made my way into the Hall of Fame, I returned home. I have no idea how I did that without my HM slaves. And my mom told me that apparently I was supposed to meet up with Matt B over in Snowpoint City. So I made my way over to San Jim City where I met up with Professor Rowan and Professor Oak. I got to meet him for the first time and he gave me the National Dex. So now, I can catch pretty much any Pokemon from Gen 1 to Gen 4. Anything beyond that is no go. I flew back to Snowpoint City and aboard the boat that would take me to the fight area. But only after I got to talk to my girl Cynthia once again. So I met up with Matt B once I got to the fight area and we got to face Flint and Volkner. And thankfully, my Machamp was able to pretty much pummel most of their team with Earthquake because ground beats electric and fire types. Once we got those guys out of the way, I got a bit of a surprise. We got to see Matt B's father, Palmer, which is kind of a shocker, I guess. But anyways, I flew back to Victory Road and met up with a trainer named Marley. She had her Arcanine, and we fought Pokemon and trainers together, like the usual kind of pairings that you get in the game. The strange thing is that, once again, her Pokemon stayed at level 59, while mine kept leveling up and gaining, gaining experience. She was able to take most of the Pokemon out with Fire Fang and Extreme Speed, and once in a while, she'd give me a helping hand boost that would help me take out Pokemon. Eventually we made it to Route 224, but there really wasn't much there. I did collect a few items, but that's pretty much it. From there on, I just continued training from Routes 225, 226, 228, 229, and 230. On those routes, I basically kept collecting different items and facing different wild Pokemon and trainers to level up my Pokemon and have them gain experience till they were about level 58. I even used the Versus Seeker quite a bit for the first time. That way I could get a lot more experience and more money. Since I'd usually have two of my Pokemon would hold either the Amulet Coin or the Luck Incense to double my money. I was also able to teach my Fiery Kong Flare Blitz, which I replaced Fire Blast. Because Fire Blast is lower accuracy, Flare Blitz is 100% accuracy, but it does inflict recoil damage. But that's better than lowering your defenses. Once I made it to the resort area, I kind of got a freebie. I got this resort free. Apparently this one guy told me it belonged to a guy from Hoenn who collects rocks. Yeah, that's Steven Stone. So Steven Stone gave me my free resort. But damn, the money you need to buy furniture for your resort is wicked expensive. I guess that's why I want to spend a lot of time at the Battle Frontier. But I don't want to go there just yet. I've got a bunch of legendary Pokemon to catch first. So once I got my Pokemon to about level 58, or around that area, I decided to go to Stark Mountain. Of course I met up with Buck and I told him I'd go through there with him. But, once I entered Stark Mountain, I had to face these So. Mars and Jupiter want to fight me. They're asking, oh, where's Cyrus? I told them they're in the distortion world. They don't believe me. Why don't you just give up already? I've already defeated your master. 
He's staying in the distortion world because he's a baby, so just give up on Team Galactic already. It's getting really annoying. I had Face Mars and Jupiter again. Their first two Pokemon were the same. The only difference is that Mars had a Perugly and Jupiter had a Skuntang. But I was still able to pretty much beat them, and I think I finally put them in their place because they decided to go back to being normal girls. Why don't you just be normal girls in the first place instead of working for some stupid terrorists? At least they got a better leader now, is this new old guy, Sharon, he is a bit more likable. Because he's not crazy like Cyrus is. He's just in it for the money. But I still gotta stop him because he's trying to steal the Magma Stone. That's no go. So I went through Stark Mountain and eventually I met up with Buck and we went through this really complex two level maze through Stark Mountain. Faced a lot of trainers and there was just one double battle with wild Pokemon that we had and it was really funny. I had my Rainer, which is the Bronzong, and he had his Claydol. We both have Levitate. And we were facing a Rhydon and Mag Cargo. The Rhydon uses Earthquake. We both dodge it with our Levitate, and he kills Mag Cargo, his own buddy. <laughs> it's hilarious. Eventually, we made it into Heatran's room, and we caught Charon and his grunts in the act. And he arrested Charon, and the other two Galactic Grunts just ran off. We didn't even get to battle him. But anyways, Buck put the stone back where it belonged, and we went back to the survival area where I met up with Buck, and once again, Matt B challenged me to a battle. And it was actually challenging this time, not because Pokemon were particularly hard, but I had two of my Pokemon knocked out at the time. But thankfully, I was able to pull through and beat him once again. Then I went back to the Pokemon Center to revive my Pokemon and go into Buck's little house. Turns out, it's a nice little bar where you can face the gym leaders of Sinnoh. And I got to face Candice, but even with a team that's strong against Ice types, it was still a bit of a struggle. I did pull through, but it wasn't as easy as I thought it would. So I went back to Stark Mountain and went through that two level complex maze again to find all the items. I was able to find the TM for Overheat and the Flame Plate, which was what I was mainly looking for. And I faced the trainers again that were there and beat them. And then I got to catch Heat Train. It was a struggle to catch Heatran, but eventually I did catch Heatran and I named him Lava Grill. If you want to see how I caught Heatran, the link is in the description. But without spoiling anything, I'm just going to say it's pretty shocking how I do it. And now I'm back at the survival area. So now I'm going to be focusing on catching all of the legendary Pokemon that I can find within Sinnoh. But, doesn't really look like there's gonna be a lot of Pokemon to catch. For one thing, some of the legendary Pokemon require mystery items. Those being Shaman, Darkrai, and Arceus. And, there's a mystery gift item to allow you to get Rotom to change forms. And I can get those. I've heard that Arceus' mystery gift item, the Azure Flute, is only obtainable through cheating since there never was a vent to begin with. So let me know in the comments if there's a way I can cheat to get the Azure Flute. But the one legendary that I cannot catch, which I'm angry about, is Regigigas. You can find it within the Snowpoint Temple, but you need to have all three of the Regis on your team in order to awaken him. But, in order to even catch a Reggie within Sinnoh, you need to have a Reggie Gigas through an event. <coughs> so it looks like the only legendaries that I'll be able to catch are Dialga, Palkia, Giratina, Cresselia, and the three Kanto legendary birds. I'm gonna have to start with Giratina because it's at level 47, then I'm going to have to go with Cresselia and then the legendary birds, 
And then once I get to level 70, I'll go for Dialga and Palkia. Other than that, there are no other legendaries that I can catch within the Sinnoh region. So, I hope I can catch all these legendaries, then I'm going to move on to the Battle Frontier and fight it out and see how awesome my Pokemon are. So that's it for today's Pokeball. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later. I hope I don't like insta-kill him. That would be embarrassing. I killed it! I'm just that powerful.